Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Right, try this on for size. Like, this is the one we're going to try and knit together. Together. Um, later in the program. Uh, I, I'm trying to work out what it was about the Cricket World Cup that had bugged me slightly. And the answer is the free-to-air element of it, the, the, the pay-TV element of it. And then the story about tennis courts and public parks closing uh, over the last decade. Uh, from 12 today, I'm going to look at my very, very nascent theory that we are pricing huge swathes of the population out of not just playing, but also watching sport. And that the anti-BBC bashing that has gathered a lot of pace recently plays directly into the heart of this issue. Because if you can't watch it without paying money, and you can't play it without paying money, well, the likelihood of a British Serena Williams emerging anytime soon is pretty slim. Four minutes after ten is the time. I, I mention that because I, I think we sometimes have the most fun together when we're uh, wrestling with, with issues that are, are barely formed. Um, and in many ways, the first conversation I'd like to have with you today falls into that category. It is about facial recognition software, something that we have touched upon in the past and something which, I, I, you know, it's a bit like yesterday when I had to confess to you that I, I used to find my knee jerking very quickly uh, um, tales of environmental activism. It's sort of almost hard to recognise yourself sometimes, isn't it, when you look in the rearview mirror? But I used to be one of those Herberts who would uh, respond to anybody uh, protesting or making personal sacrifices or indeed disrupting anybody else's life in that very sort of lazy knee-jerk way of just go, well, how dare they interfere with my life? How dare they interfere with people's... And, and you remember, we took a call yesterday from, from a chap who was on his way to chemotherapy, um, stage four cancer, uh, unlikely to... Um, uh, well, he doesn't have many more years left, but he's talking about the legacy for his children and any disruption that he has to suffer, even in such an acute scenario as the one he described, would be um, a price worth paying for protecting the planet. Those, those kind of contributions, those kind of stories, somewhat stop you in your tracks. But again today, and I'm not going to make a habit of this, although it is two out of two for the ten, um, uh, Monday and Tuesday this week. I, I'm pretty sure I used to be supremely relaxed about state surveillance. And, and the reason for that was I was born in 1972. And therefore, I never really looked at the state as something to fear. I never really considered the state's potential to be oppressive. I, I now, as a, as a Western citizen, I look at a, a, a political landscape where fascism is, you know, a hair's breadth away from what we're seeing, particularly in America. I know a lot of people don't like that word. Mm, tough. Because what fascism dictates, perhaps more than anything else, is that citizens don't get treated equally under the law. They can't expect the same protections from a government. Um, and those protections, those rights, those freedoms will be afforded according to a sort of racial hierarchy. And Donald Trump has now absolutely mainstreamed that and gone public with it, which we'll talk about in the second hour. It's an astonishing state of affairs. I know you'll laugh at me for this, but I'm reading a lot about 16th century France and the persecution of the Huguenots and the Protestants by the Catholic monarchy and uh, the Catholic Church. And the echoes are astonishing, you know, this idea that we should start killing each other. Uh, anyway, I digress. So... Sajid Javid has uh, announced that he is going to experiment with facial recognition software. The, the story is mildly amusing, given that the technology is still so nascent. Um, it, it offers up more mistakes than it does results. Last year, the American Civil Liberties Union fed the mugshots of Congress lawmakers into one facial recognition software that Amazon had created for a police force, and they found that 28 congressmen were flagged up as named lawbreakers. They weren't. It's just that the facial recognition got the recognition wrong. I don't know if you were watching telly last night. Um, on ITV's Inside China's Digital Gulag, it scanned faces in crowds to identify whether they were Uyghur Muslims, um, the oppressed minority, um, and then to see whether they're looking shifty enough for the police to stop them for questioning. Are you scared yet? OK, try this. Beijing News reported earlier this year on a similar system deployed in a high school. Took a snapshot every 30 seconds and logged whether they seemed to be concentrating or not. Right? Now, I used to say... 
things like and the problem with doing your job and indeed you're growing up in public is that it's all there on on the record i used to say things like if you've got nothing to hide you've got nothing to fear and i used to mean it because i was born in 1972 in the united kingdom and therefore the idea and i appreciate a couple of things perhaps would have stopped me in my tracks or given me pause if I'd been raised differently, if I'd been brought up in a different part of the country or a different social class rather than necessarily a different era, if I'd been blacklisted as a construction worker, um, an area which still hasn't been properly explored or reported, then I might have felt a degree of state surveillance chill me. I, even more so, I think if I'd been involved in the miners' strike in the 1980s, I might have felt a degree of state surveillance chilling me. I went to a Stop the War, and again, seeing as we're doing full disclosure on, oh, by the way, my latest uh, episode of my full disclosure podcast is with Chris Moyles, the radio god. And it, uh, bearing in mind, I hardly get a word in edgeways. It is a jolly good listen, so you, you can get hold of that wherever you, wherever you download your podcasts. But seeing as we're doing full disclosure in terms of honesty, I went to a Stop the War speech, meeting, before the Iraq War, to heckle uh, it was just around the corner from the flat I was living in at the time, and I, I, I thought the decision to go to war against Iraq at the time was correct. I don't now, obviously, and I am able to admit mistakes, which clearly is still rather unfashionable. But I went along to heckle, and I'll never forget Tony Benn, who I admired in many, many ways. Tony Benn was, every single time I saw him speak, he always referred to the fact that there'd be someone from MI6 in the room. And I thought that was a bit funny at the time. Looking back... And remembering, of course, the fact that we've only actually had the vote for 21-year-old men in this country for just shy, just over 100 years. Looking back, I, I don't know, maybe Tony Brown wasn't paranoid. The security services do try to keep things on an even keel and keep the status quo intact and push back rather hard against anyone with even vaguely revolutionary tendencies. But again, I was born in Derby in 1972. I never had anything to fear from the state and and i still don't oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number you need how and, and also this is a subject about which i know next to nothing but here we go i think um hugo rifkin in the times today is absolutely right when he says assuming we ever start doing normal politics again Britain is right on the cusp of a good old-fashioned fight about this sort of thing. Sajid Javid, Home Secretary for at least the next week, supports police trials of such software here. David Davis regards it as an assault on civil liberties, which, as Rifkin writes today, is admittedly how he regards most things, but that doesn't mean he's wrong. What he might be, though, is far too late. Do you know, when... when Hugo Rifkin writes in the Times about assuming we ever start doing normal politics again. That's exactly what he means. I can feel a degree almost of nostalgia about two senior conservative politicians disagreeing with each other passionately about something very big and important that is nothing to do with Brexit. I know that they disagree with each other, some of them do, about Brexit. Most of them are now falling into line behind the unicornists. But, you know, it, it's a bit... It's a bit Weird, isn't it, how the, the, the team-picking process has polluted almost everything. And yet, at the same time, both major parties seem to be absolutely riven with fractures and factionalism. So I'm nostalgic and looking forward once again to the days where being prominent members of the same political party does not mean that you, you will toe the same line on most given issues. Actually, I should say, apart from Brexit and anti-Semitism, where, of course, both major parties are, are split down the middle. So David Davis, who has a strong track record on, on civil liberties, if not on understanding what membership of the European Union entailed, is passionately opposed to these trials. Sajid Javid, the Home Secretary, is minded to try them. I just think it's too scary in the world at the moment to give our government the power to uh, film a crowd and decide whether or not some people merit further attention. If they do it in a, in a, in a if they do it a, a, an Extinction Rebellion march today, which I suspect I could persuade you they should do, if I was to treat you like a bit of an idiot and, and to either be economical with the truth or or, or appeal to your more um, knee-jerk tendencies, then tomorrow I could probably get it into a classroom. 
you know? And that's what they're doing in China. Identifying, just listen to this, identifying pupils likely to underperform by building a database of slouchers and grimaces. And this is how I do it. I'd, say, I'd tell you about Mr Wilcox, my old French teacher at school, who would routinely grab me by the scruff of the neck, not, not in a painful way, actually. There was plenty of uh, nasty teachers in my childhood. He, he wasn't one of them. But he was obsessed with the ability I have to slouch in a chair. I'm probably going to get some terrible curvature of the spine when I'm older, unless I start, start taking action now. I might start doing Pilates. But he, he was obsessed with how low I could go in the chair. I'd basically be a bit like those old Kilroy graffitis, you know, where the nose just peeks over the top of the wall. I'd be like that on my desk. And I, I didn't know I was doing it. It, it was genuinely a, a complete slouch. That would alert the authorities under facial recognition software, under this kind of surveillance that they've employed in Chinese schools. And that would potentially, according to reports in China, identify me as a potentially underperforming pupil. So am I being a little silly because you're already thinking, James, mate, come on, all technologies can be used for bad. It doesn't mean you get rid of them and do away with all the things they could be used for good. You know, I, I often think of crossing the road. We're not going to ban cars because people get hit by them. So in the wrong hands, this technology could do wrong things. But does that mean we should run a million miles away from it? And, and the short answer is I don't know. I, I don't like this technology, particularly in the context of what's happening in America at the moment, and a man who spent eight years whining, moaning and lying about Barack Obama is now telling people who don't like his government that they should leave the country. And you, and you worry about what facial recognition could do in that sort of context. But we're talking mostly about Trump in the next hour. This hour, facial recognition technology. A, what do you know about it? Almost certainly, if you're minded to ring the programme, almost certainly more than me. B, what should we be scared of? OK, 0345 6060973, as Nick Ferrari would say after A and B. Three, what would you like to see in place to ensure that it, it, it can't be used for ill? I, I, I still have in the back of my mind people who used to ring me to say they didn't like the idea of Oyster cards because it meant that Transport for London could track where you were going. And I'd say, what do you do for a living? And they'd say, I'm a plumber. I said, well, why the hell would the authorities be interested in tracking where you were going? But, you know, in retrospect, maybe they had a point. You might have been a plumber by day, but you might have been trying to overthrow an oppressive dictatorial government by night. And if the technology is already there, makes the government's job a lot easier. So come at this from any angle you want. 0345 973 It's 1016. We'll talk... After this, I always have that line from Adam and the Ants buzzing in the back of my brain when we do topics like this one. Ridicule is nothing to be scared of. Is facial recognition software something to be scared of? I don't know. I think it probably is. But then again, I'm rather ignorant on the issue. And of course, being fearful of something about which you are ignorant is a rather dangerous path to go down. But we're not talking about Donald Trump until the next hour. Ravin is in Croydon. Ravin, what have you got for... I, I wanted to pronounce your name Ravin then, but I presume that would have been incorrect. I, I thought there was an apostrophe missing from the end of it, but, but no. No. Ravin it no, is. Sometimes I do get a bit raving, but... No, I'm, <laughs> to, to you I'm and me both, mate. Right I just get paid for it. That's the only difference. What would you like to say? Well, I work in the facial recognition space. Oh. Um, I work... Um, I've been involved in it now um, for a few months. Oh, okay. And so you're quite new to it. Aware, I suppose everyone, everyone's new to it. A couple of years. Right, so, okay. I was going to say you're quite new to it, but theoretically everyone's relatively new to it because it's, it's, it's new technology. Yes, but I mean, I've been, I've been aware and know what's been going on for the last couple of years. Okay. And with facial recognition, look, in the wrong hands, absolutely, it should be something to worry about. No doubt about it. Um, the company that I'm working with is, work, um, is working with a German company. And in Germany, they are very, 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 very strict yes. on how facial recognition is used. Um, they are 
Um, but th this you know, government got... is. I, I don't think I, I, this government is, but it doesn't mean that a future government would be. I, I, I mean, look at America. You could just about imagine Barack Obama bringing something in and arguing successfully that it would treat everybody equally and it wouldn't single mm -hmm. out people according to mm -hmm. observable traits. But you've now got mm -hmm. a president that, that tells American people to, to get out of the country if they criticise him. So technology that would have been palatable in Barack Obama's hands is, is potentially quite terrifying in Donald Trump's tiny little hand. Well, I mean, facial recognition, I mean, just to give you an idea, mm. facial recognition is being used in the UK right now. You go to one of the major shopping centres in London, they have it, it's there. Yeah? Do they? Uh, and it's provided, uh, yes. Oh, tell me more, tell me more, tell and, me more. And, and it's, and it, um, um, you go to a Canary Wharf, it's got, they have, they use facial recognition. That's there. not a shopping um, centre. Canary Wharf is, is, is more of a business hub and, and historically yeah, a target so they're, for they're, terrorism. They're, they're shop, they're, they're, they're shop, yeah. But they, they're looking to expand it. They've been in very impressive, I mean, not, this is not supplied by us. Okay. Um, but, but by a competitor. But what, what um, does it you, do? We don't, we don't have to be specifics about locations and, and, and companies. What does it do? Why would I, if I went to place X or well, shopping centre I mean, Y? Well, well, one, thing, one, one thing it has done is, for example, people who've been regularly shoplifting previously uh, are now recognised as soon as they come in and they're, you know... By an algorithm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not by, not by a human now, being. Just, just, no, no, you, you will have, um, there is second step verification as well. So, for example, one of, one of the things that um, we do is that we use other technology as well, as well as facial recognition, so it's make sure it's two-step two step verification. Yes, you'd need to, to do sure that, that because you, the you, you, software got, still makes got, lots of mistakes. But the thing is, and, and again, with regarding this, so for example... There's been there's been conversations about the trials and how badly they've gone for the police trials that have been going on. Now, uh, the organisation that the police use for their facial recognition are a well-known company. Yeah. But their algorithm, um, just to give you an idea about how algorithms are tested, the American Department of Defence have a test that they do every year called the NIST test. I can't remember what this stands for, but it's, uh, what they do is that they invite uh, companies and universities and, and, every, uh, and to uh, subject, submit their algorithms for testing by, uh, by them, and they test for speed and also accuracy. And they use mug shots, they use visa photos, and so on. And, um, you know, the company, from what I understand, the company that the police are using have not, for the last three years, have not submitted their algorithm for testing. And I, and I would suspect that one of the reasons it hasn't been submitted for testing is because it's not that great. No, well, the people um, who've got facial... I'm going to crack on, Ravin, because I, 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 I want to squeeze in as many people as possible, but you've given us a perfect introduction. You say there's nothing to worry about, but, of course, I have to point out you would say that, wouldn't you? Because you work in... In the sector, a few of you perhaps not taking this as seriously as you might, as you point out that your facial recognition software on your phone doesn't work if you've got a little bit of stubble. 75% of the time it doesn't even recognise your face, but that doesn't matter. That's a bit like what we talked about with wind tur turbines yesterday. Just because the first prototypes or the very first examples of a new technology aren't brilliantly effective does not mean you write off the whole of that technology, unless you're an idiot climate change denier. Um, you, you, you hone the technology. Do, do, do you think the first wheel was comparable in any way, shape or form to the equipment upon which Lewis Hamilton was tooling around Silverstone at the weekend? Um, yes, there was a British Grand Prix at the weekend. You could be forgiven for having missed that, given the uh, brouhaha surrounding the cricket and, and, and the tennis. 10.25 is the time. I, I'm still scared. Scared is, is slightly the wrong word, because it makes me sound a little bit cowed, a little bit querulous. I'm deeply concerned about some, and look at some politicians in this country now who are, I think Pretty Patel yesterday was suggesting that the judges, uh, the, 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 the judiciary has no business scrutinising parliament, betraying, I think, to be generous, an incredible ignorance about how the separation of powers works in this country and how our unwritten constitution is supposed to operate. You need three. You need, you need the executive, the legislative and the judiciary. That way you ensure that no, none of them uh, enjoy untrammeled power, but Brexit has broken all of these things, and of course it has brought people who don't understand any of these things to the surface. What if they end up in government? 
you don't believe in something, it makes you persona non grata. We're living in a country at the moment where Liam Fox is being attacked, attacked by Brexiters for not believing enough because he keeps revealing things he knows to be true as a result of his work as Secretary of State for International Trade. Be silent! So if we're living in a country where we can already see people being silenced for telling the truth, and we know that Boris Johnson is a profoundly, profoundly untrustworthy individual, is that reason enough to think, I don't want this lot having facial recognition software? Or am I sounding a little bit Hunger Games? Scott's in Newcastle. Scott, what would you like to say? Hi there. Um, I, I would just like to say that I think um, with the facial rec recognition technology that, that's being spoken about, um, it, I can see the benefits to it, um, you know, picking out people in a, in a crowd that sort of might have some ill intent. But I think overall, um, it, that technology will be around for a while and maybe if a new government comes in, the purpose for the for the technology could then sort of be altered, um, and I, I think it's just like a bit of a, a, a too much data gathering in this day and age. And I it, think it's beginning to like feel like that. Be. It's beginning to feel. Yeah. I mean, I used to just joke about how why am I going to get scared about Facebook suggesting trampoline adverts to me for two years after yeah. I bought a trampoline? It all seemed fairly innocuous, but that's the foothills, isn't it? And we don't know what the yeah. mountain top is going to look like. I don't think that will be a top and it'll, it'll roll on and on um, unless something's done, which I really don't think it will be. I mean, I was listening yesterday to your show for the first time, actually. Um, oh, and I, board. It, just, um, a guy got a bit of flat for referring back to China. Yes. Um, but in China, with this sort of system, and I'm not an expert, but I do believe it's used as a, a social scoring system as well. So for argument's sake, if you had bad debt, and you try to get there's, on there's all to sorts of, 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 yeah. of surveillance going on in China. I don't think facial recognition software would necessarily play into into bad debt. They actually, but they're looking I for they're looking for characteristics from the Muslim Uyghur minority and then identifying whether or not they look shifty enough for the police yeah, to pull them in for ridiculous. questioning. Absolutely ridiculous. But there'll be people here who like that idea. You know, you could yeah, imagine yeah. Donald Trump yeah. making a speech saying, We're gonna have the best cameras and we will spot these enemies of the people from miles away and we will get them out of the country or do you I mean that not, I'm exaggerating slightly for vaguely yeah. comic effect, but I can see it on the horizon. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm too true about the scenario, I think, in general, that people are, are going to... It's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouths if that's the kind of, kind of way people are going to be trapped. And it's only going to sort of make a division that, that is going to be hard to sort of patch back up, which is, we're already in that place anyway. Mm -hmm. so I think by trying to demonize somebody on the characteristics of the face rather than the actual character in the... Um, the past behaviour is ridiculous. What, just, can we think of any benefits? Because uh, at the moment we've got the, 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 the disbenefits. Really, yeah. there, there must be some... I mean, if you were looking for a specific person and you were scanning every face in a crowd, and, you know, like mm. on Crime Watch, what's that? If that's not yeah. facial recognition, but not software, yeah. that's that's human I mean, facial would, recognition. Would, they put up a picture very, of a fella. Yeah. I'd be very much questioning the capability of that actual technology to be, you know, anywhere close to accurate on that from what you said earlier about, you know, so many guys were put in the system and the flagged up as um, fugitives or whatever. I, I, I just think, um, you know, if you're really looking for somebody, get some police out there. With, well, that, yeah, of course, that's another thing that becomes. It becomes a reason not to spend money on police officers. And, and of course... Um, I, I mean, you'd need people to operate the software and to enact the results of the software, but I, I think probably a lot of the policing problems the country's facing at the moment has has something at least to do with the absence of face-to-face, -face, you know, person-to-person -person contact, and this puts the authorities another degree away from the police. De Thank you, Scott. Welcome to the programme. That, that's it, we've peaked now, mate. It's your second day of listening and you've been on the show. You've completely you've unlocked all the achievements. It's, uh, apart from getting all mystery, uh, that, that, you, you've got a full house. Are you sort of wondering whether we can think of something that we were all a bit too relaxed about? This is a genuine question. At the beginning, um, I guess data collection, oddly enough, probably fits into that, but most of us aren't spooked enough yet, uh, largely because... I think the gravest offences committed with um, data harvesting and data collection have been political. It was manipulation of, of elections and referendums, and nobody acknowledges that they've been... Nobody actually thinks they've been manipulated. That's something we sort of discovered to, to, to great effect on this programme. You, you know, 
people ringing in saying they voted to leave the European Union because they were worried about the abolition of three-pin plugs. And you go, mate, that's not true. That was on your Facebook page. I said, well, that's not actually why I voted to leave the Europe. I voted because of this. And you said, well, that's not true either. But no one actually thinks they were manipulated. So that side of data harvesting perhaps, perhaps doesn't work. Um, what would you put on the list of things technologically? And I, I don't think that things like asbestos or thalidomide count because we weren't aware of the problems when we embraced them. Do you see what I mean? The problems emerged later. Whereas with something like facial recognition software, if problems emerge later, they should be predictable now. So is there something more in the realms of technology than public health that if we were to turn the clock back, we'd do differently? Can you think of anything? I, I can't, just for the record. But I'm talking about facial recognition software because it's making me feel a little bit discombobulated. And the reason is, um, partly because of the Chinese example, the Chinese model, whereby they are using it to surveil a population in ways that really do bear chilling resemblances to Big Brother in, in Orwell's 1984. But I would, I think, respond to that by saying, yes, but you could enjoy some of the technologies involved without crossing the line into Big Brother territory, into... into oppressive surveillance. So where is that line? And how spooked should we be by Sajid Javid's decision to start trialling this software? 0345 606 How hard is it to, to move under the wire on this? How hard is it to move under the um, uh, uh, the grid, the matrix as it was? I don't know. I, I mean, for me, I use my phone to use the tube these days. If I lose my phone, I, I lose my life unthinkable. I, I presume it's quite easy to track. Also, you know, we've got all those things. Mrs. O'Brien can find out where I am by law. She can find out where my phone is. I don't know. Uh, Hugo is in Manchester. Hugo, what would you like to say? Uh, well, in answer to your question about things to be worried about, mm. a lot of identity theft has been driven by data breaches where criminals have taken data, cross-referenced it from a variety of sources, and then used that to create a new identity uh, or false identity purporting to be you. So it, that would be one of the examples I would say. Of, of say that again? How could they pretend to be me if they haven't got my face, unless it's John Travolta in Face Off? Well, if we're talking about face recognition, perhaps not. But if oh. you, you ask for an example... You mean data in general? Data, yes, OK. No, yeah. fair enough. So in general, you're, and it could be from a variety of sources. They use your email address to tie it all together. Because but isn't... I hope I'm not misunderstanding thing. you, but wouldn't, wouldn't facial recognition actually be a guard against what you're talking about there? It depends what they want to do with it. We're at a very interesting time, James. Yes, we are, we've clearly. We've got artificial intelligence and machine learning really taking off. In our, now you can get a, a computer to paint a very realistic Rembrandt. You've got cloud computing, which represents massive computing power. You've got big data to enable you to make connections between things that were, from a computational standpoint, impossible before. And you've got 5G and more, enormous bandwidth. That yes. is all coming together right now. And uh, to your earlier point, you can't tell what people will decide to do with you can't take on trust that the government of today won't turn Orwellian in the future. No, I know, so but, but I could also concerned. portray all of the things you've just described as desperately exciting. I, I, and, and forgive the crassness of this analogy, and, I, and I, I think you will forgive it. You'll understand that it, it's simplistic, but not entirely pointless. You know, ev almost every technological development can either go wrong or be used for ill and, and i'm going to use a car as an example you know how many people are killed by cars every year and yet no one ever suggests that we get rid of cars and i know that's crass but just because there are potential problems with the technological triangulation that you've just described doesn't mean we should abandon the whole thing does it no i'm not, I'm not arguing for an abandonment of it but the the genie is out the bottle that's that's already gone the, what you should be arguing for is a debate about what we accept and oh, i am i think i am i yeah. think that is part yeah. of today's program so what would be your key concerns where would you put your your your, your lines in the sand so to speak it's a lot, I find that very hard because mm. you have to. The, the, the cleverness about this technology is to find relationships that you didn't know existed. So uh, it, you may well find that the people will, who know what they're doing, will run hypotheses. But well, maybe if these people with those faces are, are colluding together, they're seen together. Does that mean that we can draw other data from maybe from the mobile phone network as to what they may be doing, what they may be seeing, what they may? So I, I, I don't know 
yet what it could be used for. But I think we need to uh, have a debate more about privacy and what do we ex- well, 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 the boundaries. Will we be willing to have, for example... You can't the opt out of it. That, that seems a very yeah. salient point underpinning everything you've just said. And there, there was a case, I think, earlier this year of a fellow who objected to having his picture taken by a surveillance yeah. van and he, he ended up with some sort of fine. He ended up in some sort of legal bother. So I'm all for this, but up to the point where I'm not allowed any say in what it's used for or whether it's done to me. And, and then that becomes a civil liberties issue, as David Davis would no doubt argue. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether you've ever tried using voice over IP in, in the United Emirates, but you can't no. hardly because they are monitoring and, and uh, controlling that channel communication very closely. It, do we want to live in a society like Dubai, uh, the UAE, or do we want to live in a different society? That, that's the debate we need to have. Or do we want to be the 51st state of a racist authoritarian regime. That's a debate that it fearfully is perhaps too late to have now. It seems set to happen anyway. Uh, Hugo, thank you. I like that. I, I, and, and that is the conversation. And that's what worries me about the state of media and politics is that, as Hugo has just attested, we need to have a nuanced, intelligent, informed debate without just picking sides and hurling abuse at the other. And I can't remember the last time we did that as a country. Alex is in Birmingham. Alex, what made you pick up the phone? Hi. Um, it's really just because I, I mostly agree with these sort of uh, with these sort of initiatives to instill facial recognition. Good. Go on. Um, I mean, I think it's. I understand, and it's an intrinsically uncomfortable nature of having your face monitored or your face merely observed upon by anybody else, let alone a government or an organisation. And yet, the mass majority of the public are gleefully handing over just absolute swathes of, of, of biometric identifiers. Just Not wittingly, things. though, necessarily. And they, they might be. I mean, gleefully is a slightly odd adverb to use because a, a lot of them are doing it without realising. I mean, even the well, deep I mean, the deep dive on on your Facebook settings would come as a major shock to most people. I know because we've we've covered issues like that on the program. People had no idea what they were sharing. With well, I see these... countless amounts of people persistently, you know, showing off their latest mobile phone that has a fingerprint identification that works through the screen, and it, it's something that they quite enjoy doing now. Um, but this yeah, is the, that, none, none of these, are, none of these, are, none of these are defences of facial recognition software, are they? They're just people enjoying the technology on their thumbprint phone. Well, no, but um, so, so linking to my second point on yeah. that, it's, it's, it's this information is already being handed over to private organisations, which has been brought to mainstream media attention. Many government organisations and security and defence in particular have backdoor access to. So they can access your phone calls, your camera yeah, but you're, not, you're not sounding like an advocate of the technology. You're sounding like you're warning against it. You're saying, oh, there's nothing to worry about because all this dodgy stuff is already going on. I'm all in favour of it. I mean, most people, again, would probably not be comfortable if they understood the full scale. And I'm quite new to this whole world and subject, but if they knew the full scale yeah, of what was you know, going as, on. As am I, and it's, and it's an opinion that I am still forming myself. And, you know, Good, I'm, that's very I'm honest to be proven wrong on these sort of Well, that, that is the but beauty the of, of an open nature, mind, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I think the uncomfortable nature of the monitoring aspect can sort of be mitigated by the fact this information is already being handed over to public organisations which have links to the government. And and really, I still struggle to see the nefarious aspect of it. But again... Well, let me read market, you this then. I mean, know. here you go. In, in, in Xinjiang, as seen on ITV's Inside China's Digital Gulag last night on the telly, yeah. It scans faces in crowds to identify whether they are members of the oppressed, largely Muslim Uyghur minority, and then to see whether they're looking shifty enough for the police to stop them for questioning. Now, I suppose you could mount a defence of this technology if it was looking at every face in the crowd for signs of shiftiness, but if it's literally focusing only on members of a, of yeah, a specific yeah. ethnic minority, and then you just hop over to America, where Donald Trump is essentially calling for Americans who don't like him to leave the country, it's not hard to see where those two paths could convene, is it? No, absolutely. And I mean, I guess that comes from a hyper-efficient mechanism of, of a human trait. I mean, that is what most emerging technologies tend to, that tend to thrive are merely are. They're a hyper-efficient version of a human ability. The monitoring of yeah. walking down a street in central London, you're going to be observed. And if you're on any sort of list for whatever reason, they will pay extra attention to it. I believe this is just an allowance to that on a much more refined and a much more larger scale than I, I see. I, 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 aren't capable of doing uh, it. No, I, I, I like this. I, and I, I, I would rather be where you are on this argument, and I've no idea whether mm. what I'm about to say is quite the zinger that I think it is. But you know computers, computers just beat the best poker players in the world at poker. Yeah. 
So this notion of them merely doing what humans do in a slightly more efficient way, that they're overtaking No, in a hyper-efficient way. Oh, beg your pardon. That, oh, no, OK, so hyper-efficient. So, yeah, well, that would fit with your analysis. I, I, I suppose my analogy is, is sort of reaching clumsily for the suggestion, but I don't want to play poker against a computer that would beat me. The four American politicians targeted by Donald Trump's latest racist tirade are urging people not to rise to the bait. I want to know what they mean and whether or not you agree with them. I, I suspect they're right in that we're talking about Trump's racism instead of talking about Trump's friend being under arrest for child sex trafficking or, or about Trump's Labour secretary having resigned for um, presiding over the plea deal that allowed Trump's friend who's under arrest for child sex trafficking to um, uh, have a very, very lenient sentence last time he was in court. Um, similarly, we're not talking about the children in concentration camps at the border or, or, or the adults being held in circumstances that, that look like they could have come from 1930s newsreel. But is it that simple? And, and how do you do this? I, I got a couple of calls here. I said, will you come in and debate this? Will you come in and debate that? And, and obviously, you know, I said no. But um, part of the reason I said no was there's no debate here. I, I mean, what, it's like having a debate about whether or not the moon is made of cheese, as I'm very fond of saying. I, I, this is just racism. No one would deny it. No one sensible can deny it. So all you do when you debate it is allow insensible people into the mainstream. And, and allowing insensible people into the mainstream is why things have gone so bonkers. Uh, you remember a year ago when I started telling you it would be a no deal or, or no Brexit? And the most furious responses, in fact they were so furious you could almost feel the spittle landing on your face from social media, were from so-called Brexiters. Absolutely ridiculous. It's, uh, and now they're all pretending that it's what they wanted all along. You can't really bring logic to a, to a fight like that. You can't really break into the brain or the mindset of someone who is lying to themselves. It doesn't matter whether they're lying to you or not. But that, that, that's the problem. I mean, why, why would you debate with someone who is lying to themselves? You can't. You can never bring light into that conversation. But, of course... If you don't engage, if you don't rise to the bait, then arguably the the darkness spreads. 10.51 is the time. Back to facial recognition software, which I am still discombobulated by, but perhaps perhaps not quite on the scale I was at 10 o'clock. Josh is in Twickenham. Josh, what would you like to say? Hi there, James. Thanks for having me on the show. I, I don't know if you'll remember me. We actually met at the People's Vote March very briefly. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I came along, I think I said something that was quite relevant to your current conversation. Oh, good. I came along and said something like, along the lines of, Hi, James, I'm an economist and Brexit's rubbish. But uh, <laughs> the economist part is important there because in economics, um, we touch upon something uh, quite important, which is econometrics. And as part of advanced econometrics, we use machine learning algorithms to yes. determine, you know, what the economy is going to do or to look at insights into the economy. But the same techniques and machine learning algorithms... Not, 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 not to determine, for, sorry to uh, be a pedant, but to estimate. Because uh, right. you, you, you will look <laughs> at past behaviours and suggest that that increases <laughs> the likelihood of repetition. Statistical significance, yeah, you're course. quite right. Hey, you so, I told you, you that's me. quite all right. <laughs> Carry on, Josh. <laughs> so, when, when it comes to machine learning, well, one of the things that you want that, that's really important for determining what's statistically significant and what isn't is the, t is the type of training data that you use. And for machine learning algorithms, that's particularly important. So when it comes to facial recognition technology, there have been companies that uh, were named in uh, Jamie Susskind's book, Future Politics. So I, I, I will confess that none of my opinions here are my own very briefly. No, fine. You've learned <laughs> he from he experts. <laughs> <laughs> he, t he touched upon an example where you know a company was trying to use uh, facial recognition technology to determine and characteristics about people which meant that they were either beautiful or not now this company used a training data a training uh, a data set from north america uh, in in which the faces that they were using for the technology were you know 80 to 90 percent white and then the other 10 to 20 percent was of other ethnicities mm. and so the results, of course, reflected exactly the same statistics. Now, that does not mean that white people are more beautiful or not than other races, but what it means is that the training data, uh, the, the statistics that were in the training data were reflected in the results of the study. And that's a kind of, if you started to apply that to, you know, some kind of social media to tell people whether or not they're beautiful, like some of those Black Mirror episodes that we've been seeing, then, um, mm. you know, p perhaps you'll encounter some problems of, let's call so it, it is, uh, it is like everything else. It is like yeah. everything else. It is, it is not the technology or or the, or the uh, machinery per se that is problematical. It's about the uses that it will be put to. Quite.
So Clock, with the yeah. proper proper regulations in place, although I'm, I've got a little memo to self, instead of saying regulations, I'm going to start saying protections because bad people use the word regulation to persuade good people that they don't want them, whereas what regulation almost always means in these contexts is protection. So with the right protections in place, there should be nothing to fear. How do you accommodate my slightly apocalyptic suggestion that that's all well and good under this government, mm. but what if another government comes in, by hook or by crook, and rides roughshod over all of those protections, and the technology is already so well established and so well disseminated that there'll be nothing you can do to stop it being put to nefarious or, 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 or unpleasant use? I, I quite like the example that you bring up because it is exactly what I wanted to talk about as well because if we take the same example that I used before when it comes to beauty and facial recognition yes. technology yes. and now we say, right, well, let's use the same study and let's apply it to something else. Rather than beauty, let's say it's crime, for example. And let's say that we look at all of the criminals' faces to try and determine, you know, who's potentially possible, uh, oh, no. uh, who's a possible criminal and who's not. Yes. Know? And if, if for some reason there were, you know, socio-economic or cultural or historical factors, why, let's say for, uh, you know, accurate examples, say that members of the uh, black and Middle Eastern communities were of a higher proportion in, in, in those, um, you know, arrest figures. Yes. Then let's say that the results of that facial recognition technology study would be, uh, you know, would reflect the base data set, wouldn't they? So yes. th there is this possibility for automated discrimination then. Because or, or you could only be looking. You could set yeah. it to, you could, governments or, or authorities could choose only to look for certain people from certain backgrounds and then give exactly. a free pass to others, which is, of course, yeah. what, what we'll be talking about in the next hour, not affording equal rights to all citizens. And, and the best way to establish the differences would be with the facial recognition. You mentioned the people's vote, um, Josh, I'll be talking to Margaret Beckett in about two hours, just under two hours' time, about um, a new report that's been published by her and Dominic Grieve, the joint political chairs of the People's Vote campaign. So, so make sure you stick around for that. You weren't the fella in the pub with the James O'Brien for Prime Minister placard, were you? No, no, oh, no. God I'm for that, I've been worried no, about no, him. What? Briefly went, James O'Brien, and then you turned around and said, aha, picture time, I see. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, pure partridge. 55. Thank you, Josh, and thanks for your kind words that day. Claire is in Newquay. Claire, what would you like to say? Hi there, Hi, Claire. thank you for taking my call. You're very welcome. I'm probably being really simplistic now. Don't worry, you're in good in company. That, <laughs> in that my, my daughter ran away um, some six months ago, Oof. and facial recognition had kind of had there been more of it and it found her sooner she's fine by the way oh, i'll put goodness. that right at front yes yeah, um you. I, fantastic bring it on this no it's I've, not simplistic at all these are these are the these are the sledgehammers that we sometimes have to bring to the table aren't they because who yes. here wouldn't want every face in every crowd in the country to be scanned if their 14 year old daughter was missing Yes, so I wonder how many people are kind of armchair pundits going, oh, this is terrible. You know, I have Facebook. I enjoy it for sharing jokes, sending pictures of funny chickens, yes. and whatever else goes on. But there is, call it to the nth degree, because there's nothing on me. I never put pictures of my children on there. There is nothing about me. I have a different name. I don't mm. even use my own name. Crikey. Go for it. How do people because find you then? I tell them. Oh, I see. I only, only let people... Have, I only connect with people that I know. Yes, same here on Facebook. I, Twitter's a I different have a question. I don't have time to talk to <laughs> huge amounts of strangers. And I, I, I'm, you know, I choose the groups that I join because I'm interested in the subject matter. But does, uh, um, and I don't think you can answer this objectively, and I certainly wouldn't expect you to because in your shoes I wouldn't be able to either, but does your perceived benefit of this technology outweigh all the potential negatives that we've been discussing this morning? In your mind, yeah, of course it flipping does, because my, my little girl might still be missing. But objectively, you know, what if she was a, a, a Uyghur Muslim in China and the facial technology software was being used to target her for particular police attention? Or I'm incorrigible, has just tweeted some yeah. astonishing that footage, ag again from China, of <laughs> surveilling school children. Oh, phone's gone funny. There you go. I think she said something that activated the technological guards. But poli no, I'm joking. Um, 10.57 is the time. Thank you. And I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad you clarified that, actually, because I'm never quite sure how to conduct those conversations while there's a massive and, and potentially very uh, sad question mark hanging over proceedings. Back to the phone. Simon's in Wokingham. Simon, what do you think? Uh, hi, James. Uh, first Hello. time caller. Very well. First time caller working in the uh, CCTV surveillance industry. Oh, perfect. Um, 
so I have had a lot of experience of selling uh, CCTV systems into large corporate and uh, applications, and a lot oh, yeah. of those have a bolt on of uh, facial recognition. You know, it's one of those things that can be perceived as good or bad. If you're if you're traveling on an airplane, you'd like to think that people walking into the aircraft, uh, into the airport, would be identified as a ter- any terrorist threat. Yes. So you know, in in that hand, very very positive. But equally, yeah. what what if I, what if they were being identified as someone who had tweeted? bad stuff about the government last week, which is not fanciful. It's happening in countries ever closer to home. There's people, I think, in Turkey now being prosecuted for tweets criticising Erdogan. So, you know, That's true. For, every, for every terrorist on an aeroplane, there's a journalist doing journalism, potentially under this technology. I agree. I mean, working in the industry, I wouldn't fear it so much. I mean, any technology used in the wrong hands can be used as a weapon, a force for good or a force for bad. Yes. CCTV cameras can survey a wide, can survey a wide area. They can also look into a bedroom and see what's, or, you know, in a private residence and see what's going on. So, yeah, that's true. You know, there, can, there can be good or bad. Um, what I would be worried about it would be the use of big data. More. Um, and how our credit card transactions, our bank statements... You know, I, I work with a large three-letter American organization that makes a lot of computers. Yes. And, and they, had a techno- they had a lot of technology uh, called Watson. Yes. Uh, you, may have, you may have heard about it. It rings um, a bell, yes. And, and I mean, this has the ability to analyze extreme amounts of data. And, 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 and I respond to that by saying, so what? It, it, it's going to tell me that I want to buy a trampoline or it's going to recommend something. And then you say, yeah, but, but what if it's getting you to believe really dodgy things? Or what if it's identified your susceptibility to various manipulations and worse? I'm only c- curtailing the conversation, Simon, so that I can head towards the news almost on time for once.